Hi and welcome to turning Joomla maintenance into a money making machine. A few words about myself. My name is Mateusz, you can call me Matt. Um, I'm really passionate about IT. I like to play with things, tinker with them. I started doing freelance work when I was 12. I started learning programming when I was 10. And currently I'm a scrum master and a developer at Perfect Dashboard. Which means I not only develop code, I also I also manage at releases and the team schedule. So a few words about Perfect Dashboard. Uh, what is it? It's a place for storing backups, managing updates, automating the testing of your sites, and basically it allows you to manage five more times as, as many websites in the same time. It's also a community, a community of 3,000 web administrators from over 70 countries on six continents, and some insights used for creating this presentation is not just my experience, uh, but it's just data we collected from thousands of Joomla websites that use hundreds of different extensions. So why even manage websites? Why don't just make websites? Well, it's good money. You agree on a maintenance contract with your customer once, and you get to charge them every month. It's a known stable source of income. Because with freelance jobs, you might get an X contract, you might not. With a maintenance contract, you know you're getting X amount of money every month. If you do maintenance, you, you don't need to approve every <coughs> update, every little fix with the client, because you agreed on that beforehand, so it's less paperwork. more or less twice as the same amount of time as needed for creating one website. With well-planned maintenance, it's not the case. You can maintain 10 more websites in three times the time. And it's good for the community. The main reason sites get hacked, whether it's Joomla, or WordPress, or Drupal, or Magento, is because people don't update them. And we've had, had on the keynote today uh, that Joomla does release its patches very quickly, but it doesn't do any good if you don't apply the patch, right? So, all your websites get hacked, then Joomla gets blamed for being insecure, and the reputation of the entire Joomla project suffers. So, how do you find clients? Well, there are a couple of customer sources. You can use customers who are you currently creating a website for, you can contact people who you've created a website for in the past. You can try and target people who got hacked. And sometimes uh, in Perfect Dashboard, people ask support questions um, that really are out of the scope of our software. So we just look at our database of users and pick those who maintain websites and do it on a regular basis and forward those questions to them. How would you convince a customer uh, that you don't have a customer now, that they need maintenance. Basically, people forget that owning a website is not a privilege, it's a responsibility. If I owned a shop and the floor was slippery and someone walked in, fell over, broke a leg, well, he would sue me. So if I enter your site and my computer gets infected because there's some malware on your site, I will blame you. So, owning a website is a responsibility. A responsibility towards your customers, your clients, and the people who visit the site. And also, you should tell them that, well, a website is somewhat like a car. You wouldn't drive for 500 miles to check out what you An existing customer, uh, they tend to be surprisingly tricky to convince. But the thing to tell them is that technology changes quickly. Um, new software updates come out every day, uh, new security fixes come out every day, and the thing that usually convinces them is saying that it's not about the website, it's about the brand reputation. Because imagine this headline, New York Times infects its users, or CNN infects its users. Um, 
So, if you do manage to convince the customer, you should prepare. If you're taking a website that you didn't write, you have to review the code. Some people uh, use nasty hacks in Joomla core or WordPress core, and then updating is a nightmare. Um, once you've verified that there are no hacks or you found them and noted them down, it's time to update the site or upgrade the newest version, obviously. Plugins or something that makes the site updatable so you don't have the same problem again. Um, an important part is scope of management or SLA. Uh, it's a bit of a legal term. Basically, you need to agree with your customer what exactly it is that you do. Uh, there's no fixed options to choose from what to include in SLA. It's basically, it, it is a contract, a legal contract but it doesn't have to be lawyery, it can just be an agreement between the two. Um, so, just pick what you think is an acceptable standard of um, Usually, people include backups, monitoring, so if the site goes down, you either contact the hosting or you do something about it whatever you can, and updates. In addition, people offer upgrades, and on the difference between those two, I'll talk in a second. Uh, some offer hosting, some offer content management, and even doing custom work. Updates versus upgrades. An update is usually uh, either the last minor patch version, so let's say from Joomla 3.4.6, to 3.4.7. Uh, sometimes people call uh, 3.4.5 an upgrade. Uh, with Joomla, actually, the latest versioning system got a bit, uh, a bit skewed. But for example, going from 2.5 to 3 is definitely an upgrade. <laughs> That's why it's usually not included in the standard scope of management. Um, monitoring versus hosting. If you just monitor the site, and if it goes down, you can you know, email the uh, hosting provider saying, hey, my client's site is, uh, I can't reach it, right? I type the address in the browser, it doesn't come up. Uh, we actually set up a script that monitored the sites, and when one of them went down, just sent an email to the hosting provider saying, please do something about it. Uh, how is the frequency of uh, testing? It's, uh, it's it does exactly what you should uh, include in the scope of management with your client. You agree that, okay, I'll check that with script every hour, every five minutes, every day. Yeah. It depends on the agreement. We did it on half an hour basis. That's, uh, yeah. That's frequent. Uh, when you host the website, if it's down, then it's your problem. But still, you should do something about it, of course. Um, and the thing is, that some things scale well, some things don't scale well, which means the more customers you have, um, the proportion to work time required versus the amount of customers either is rose exponentially or is a normal line. And for example, backups monitoring updates, easy scalable, you just start an update on five sizes once, it does its thing, you come back after a coffee or whatever, have it done. Hosting, not really. Um, I mean, sorry, hosting, yes. Uh, in that context, hosting, yes. Because, well, you just buy a reseller uh, VPS account with some hosting and you just stuff the customer's website to that. Of course, you have to uh, remind yourself of security because, well, if you don't protect them well enough, then one site getting hacked could lead to all the other sites. That's why I'm not too convinced on, on offering hosting because it's a huge responsibility and it could potentially lead to uh, quite some serious issues. But upgrades are not scalable because you can't just automate going from Joomla 1.5 to Joomla 3.6. It's it's a nightmare. It's a it's a yeah, it's a shit show basically. <laughs> uh, content management obviously not scalable, uh, and changes on the website doesn't work. Well, you can't scale that well. 
The most interesting bit, the price. We all love money. Uh, how much should you actually charge for uh, monitoring or maintenance, basically? Well, our clients claim that for large projects, it's usually between 20 and 25% uh, because of the uh, set a minimum go to 30-40%. Uh, that's what they said. We have a different method of calculating that, um, which we'll get to that shortly. Um, the basic business model must include the initial preparations, is it a one-time fee or is it calculated to be recurring price? Um, the services, is it a monthly or a yearly contract with the customer? Um, and how do you manage the non-scalable services like condom management, custom work, upgrades? Do you say, okay, you will pay me X amount of euro an hour or you will pay me X euro for the whole thing? It all comes into the scope of agreement with your customer. And the agreement itself, uh, it should be written, uh, obviously. Uh, emails are fine, just something to back it up in case of, of uh, disputes, although I would always prefer a formal binding legal contract. Um, the key provisions, which means the basic, basic description of what is it that you do, should be, uh, should be in a separate document. And you can use general terms and conditions for the rest. Um, on Perfect Dashboard, there's this uh, section called Resources, and we've prepared document templates that you can use. Um, they might need adjusting because they were written for the US law, so you might need to consult a lawyer whether they are completely okay for Austria. Uh, but they are set, set, sort of set in guidelines to how those things look like in, uh, in other customers' worlds. So, let's calculate the price. Let's assume we are getting paid for an hour. And first of all, we have to learn about the update. Well, you can't put a time tag on that because you might just come up, up on it on Twitter or something. Um, but let's say, backing up takes you five minutes. You press the button, you do go, go do something, you come back, you download the backup. Then, you have to make sure that the backup is actually a normal, proper backup. Uh, because you don't have a backup until you test it. You have to unpack the backup, check the files, see if everything is okay. That will take you about half an hour. Then you have to install the updates. Oh, it's simple, five minutes already. And then the painful part, testing the site, is clicking through on a local instance probably. <coughs> and then obviously <laughs> fixing the bugs. So that comes out to two hours, 20 minutes per one update. Assuming three updates a month and a 40 euro hourly late rate, that comes to a whopping 280 euro a month for one site. And that's not really cheap enough. You can't do it all by hand. So enter automation. You can automate most of those things, for example, Learn about the updates, set a daily reminder, check for new Joomla version, check for new extension versions, make sure that everything is up to date. Backup. Uh, Akiba Pro has a scheduled backup option. You can just uh, make sure that you will... No, no, not even the Pro version, the basic one that does via cron script. You can just schedule a backup. Uh, to verify the integrity, you can write a bash script that will just unpack it, go through every file. Oh, sorry, check check the uh, content. Installing, well, that's just clicking. Uh, not really the point of automating that. Testing the site, it's possible to automate. Uh, Codeception is a framework for automated testing uh, that uses Selenium as a web driver. Basically simulates a user browser interaction. Although, from my experience, uh, it's really hard to work with because it's not reliable. So, a lot of patience. Uh, is required. Fixing the bugs sadly cannot be automated. It uh, never can. But there are some tools you can use to ease the pain of updating. Uh, obviously, there's, there's us, Perfect Dashboard. Uh, SiteGround has some automated backup 
uh, things as this Akiba, uh, this Watchfully, and there's my Joomla. They all offer some sort of automation to the whole process. So let's say you've got the perfect setup running. You've uh, managed to automate all those things. So learning about the updates is still out of the creation. But now, let's say backup takes you five minutes. Now that you've got script, you just set it running. It does its thing, five minutes. Installing was five minutes, so it takes five minutes. Uh, testing the site, now that you've automated that, you just run the script, go grab a coffee, come back, five minutes. Fixing the bugs, still, sadly, 40 minutes. That comes out to a uh, total of 120 euro a month, still a lot, but if you think about it in a way that if you automate everything, you can run it on four sites at once, or eight sites at once. So you don't need to charge 120 because in that one hour that you will spend updating sites, you can update Being in charge 30 a month, which is, I think, a decent price for keeping a site secure. And there's a community You become a part of the community. You don't have to sign up to ask a question there. There's, um, there's a couple of very uh, experienced web admins that will um, answer your questions. Um, I mentioned the document templates, they are free to use, no uh, questions asked, basically MIT licensed. Um, you don't have to, I don't know, you have to sign up but, uh, to download them, but you can just use a fake email if you don't want to sign up. And uh, I think that by updating websites, making sure that they are always patched, we can make the internet a safer place. Thank you. That's a bit too dark.